Hey guys, welcome back, it's Crystal. So today I have a Sephora haul and I picked up a lot of the new arrivals, especially in the Sephora collection. I think the Sephora brand gets overlooked a lot and they have some really great products. So I picked up a lot of the new arrivals and I wanted to share them with you. I have a few other things from other brands as well, but the majority of products here are from the Sephora brand, and I'm still going to do a dedicated video on the Sephora brand. I just haven't gotten around to it, and I thought I would pick these new items up and kind of include it in that video, so I will eventually get to it, I promise. I just haven't done it yet. Let's see, let's start off with this new primer. This is the Sephora Beauty Amplifier Afterglow Primer and Luminizer. So this is one fluid ounce, and I think it retails for like $16. Comes in a squeeze tube. It says prep the skin with this multi pearl primer for a lit from within glow. This brightening formula in a cooling gel texture creates a smooth and refreshing canvas for makeup application. I really do like this. I've used it several times. So like it says it has like a gel consistency and it has like a skin tone color to it but then when you blend it out it has like a gold sheen to it. Very subtle though. It's not like metallic or anything like that but it does have like a gold um, sheen it just gives you that lit from within glow I'm like obsessed with illuminizing primers right now I don't really feel like they make my makeup last any longer but I like to use these especially with matte foundations because I am a fan of like satin matte foundations but sometimes some of the foundations that I have that are matte are just flat and dull and because my skin is more normal to dry, I just don't like wearing those on their own. So to amp them up, I like to use the illuminating primers. I put them on my face and then I put my foundation over them. It really just gives that lit from within glow to my matte foundation. So if you wanna amp up your matte foundations, try using an illuminating primer. And I like this one, I think it's really good. I picked up one of the new Sephora Bright Future color correctors. This is the one in pink slash brightener. They have them in green, yellow, pink, I think lavender or violet, I think it's lavender, mango and peach. So I just picked up the pink one because the pink one just brightens under the eye for me and that's what I like to use it for. So the applicators on here look like this. A lot of people complain about the applicator. It's not intended to swipe on because you really don't get that much product. You actually have to dot it on. So that is like one negative that people have about this product. I personally don't mind it. Um, I'm slowly realizing that less is more for me, like less concealer, less foundation. So you just dot this on and then you can blend it out. I do find that if you remove the stopper, you can get more product and then swipe it on instead of dotting it on. But then the cap gets really messy because it seeps into the cap. So if you wanna take out the stopper, I would recommend storing it in an upright position and then you can um, take out the stopper and apply more to your eyes or wherever on your face you need it. So a lot of people don't like the applicator on here, which it's not my favorite, but I can deal with it. And then some other people complain that these don't give a lot of coverage and they really don't. I personally don't need a lot of coverage when it comes to concealer, so for me it works. So this is the pink shade and it does really just brighten, so I like it. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite under eye brightener, but it does do the job for me, for somebody who doesn't need a lot of coverage. I don't have dark circles, so I don't need a lot of coverage, but if you have dark circles, I don't know that this, maybe the darker ones, like the Mongo is pretty dark. Uh, that one may cover dark circles pretty well, but this pink one, it's pretty light. So I picked up another Sephora Rouge lipstick. These are not new, but I really like them. I have a couple others. Um, this one is called Ingenuous, and it's just a beautiful nude. These lipsticks are just really creamy. They feel comfortable on the lips, and they're really pigmented. So I just had to pick up another shade, especially one that's very wearable. That's why I picked this one. But it's just a really pretty shade. I really like it. If you haven't tried these lipsticks, I definitely recommend this one, Ingenuous, because it's a very wearable nude, or I love this other one that I have called Mmm, like literally M-M-M-M, -M -M, and that one's like a beautiful mauve. I love mauve lipsticks, so not everybody does. I purchased this Sephora Color Switch by Veramona. This is like a little pad, and it says it instantly removes shadow color from makeup brushes, and basically what you do is you just swish your brush around this little porous, pad here and it just takes off all the makeup from your brush not for foundation but like for eyeshadows 
So I haven't used this yet. Let's test it out right now. This bag has been sitting under my desk forever to do this video. So I haven't even used this. I don't know why I should have pulled it out. Because I've used some of the other products in this bag. I just didn't get around to this. I have this brush right here. It's dirty. I'm just going to swish it around. Oh, it's a lot. The texture of it's a little different. Like, it feels different. Huh, interesting. Okay, so it didn't totally get all the shadow out of my brush, but it did get a good portion out. Let me try another brush. Let's try this one. It kind of just like helps dust the product out of the brush, basically. So again, I didn't get all of the product out of the brush, but it did get some of it out. The only thing with this is I would, I feel like one of my brushes did share, shed a hair in there. I feel like this might rough up your brushes. You know what I mean? Like make them all frailed. So hmm. I'll, have to, I'll just have to keep using this and see what I think. I would imagine you can rinse this because over time it's going to get a bunch of shadow in it and it's going to get really built up and dirty. So I would imagine you can rinse it out and let it air dry. So I'll have to continue playing with that and mention it like in an upcoming video. So I picked up a Sephora colorful bronzer slash contour, if you will. I did a whole video on the blushes from this collection and one other contour that's called Tranquil. It's like a really cool toned grayish contour shade, but I thought I would pick this one up. This one's called Los Cabos. And they actually have another bronzer that's bigger called Los Cabos as well. And that's like one of my all-time favorite bronzers. I love it. Um, I feel like the tone of them are a little bit different though. The nice thing about these is you can pop them out. Right here's a little divot and you just pop the shadow out. It's magnetic. or not shadow. Um, contour. But the same with their eyeshadows. You can pop them out. And then you can just put the pan in a Z palette, which is really, really nice. So I like the color of this. It's really smooth and texture. I've worn it several times. I think it's a really nice bronzing contour powder and it's really light so it's not too dark i think it would be good for light to medium skin tones and i picked up a bunch of the sephora colorful eyeshadows these are actually new shades i think they discontinued some of the old ones though so some of these are new shades if you click on the eyeshadows it will tell you at the top like which ones say new I do have some Sephora eyeshadows that I really like and I think they're underrated so because I like those I decided to pick up these new shades and some of them are a little bit softer than others. The matte ones are amazing in texture. I have not worn them on the eyes yet. This is just what the packaging looks like on these. At the top here it tells you whether it's a shimmer or a matte. This first color is called Mermaid Tail and this was actually a color in one of their limited edition collections. And the eyeshadow was a little bit different. It was a little bit bigger, I think, and it looked like fish scales, like the imprint on the eyeshadow. But I'm not sure if this one's exactly the same. I, If I recall, I thought the other one had glitter in it, but this one doesn't. So it's just a really pretty duochrome shade. I have used this once. I feel like the texture on this one's not quite as soft as some of the others. And I feel like I did have to build it up a little bit, but the color of this is so unique and so pretty. I really like it. So it has like a blue, green, purple shift to it. It's just so pretty. If you apply it wet, it gives you more intensity or if you apply it over like a sticky eyeshadow base, but it's just a really pretty unique color. That's why I picked that one. So this one's a shimmer and it's called Early Frost. And I think this one was described as a silver white, perhaps. I can't remember, but I think that may be the description of this one. This one is called Swell, and it's like a beautiful taupe. This one's called Hippie Girl. This one is called Free Hug. 
and this one was a little bit smoother in texture. I did wear this one once. And it applied just fine. It was pigmented. This one is called Speed Dating, and this is probably one of my favorite shimmery ones that I picked up. The texture of this is really smooth as well, and it just has really good pigmentation, and it's just a really pretty color. So that's Speed Dating. So this one's called Skinny Dipping. This one's a matte. The rest of them that I'm gonna show you are mattes, and the mattes are incredible in texture. I really recommend the matte. Um, this one is skinny dipping. It's like a purpley taupe. Really pretty. This one's called Panama Weekend. And again, this is a matte, really creamy in texture. So that's Panama Weekend. That's going to make an amazing crease color. This one's called My Dear Nude. Which is that shade right there. I swatched them all at once just to speed up this video because just in case my daughter wakes up from her nap. This one's called Danger in Paradise. Again, a matte with a really nice formula. It's very pigmented. Those were all the eyeshadows from the Sephora collection that were new shades. They have a lot more new shades though. I do have some of them on my wish list. If I pick up any more, it might be the mattes. I do have to use these because I have not used any of the mattes on my eyes, but just feeling the texture of them, they're just so incredibly soft. And I think they would be a dream on the eyes, but we will see. I will have to let you guys know for sure. And I do need to play around with the shimmery ones. I've only used a couple of them and they worked pretty well. So. Those are all the Sephora collection eyeshadows that I picked up. You guys know I'm like an eyeshadow junkie. I just can never get enough eyeshadows ever, 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 ever. So I did pick up one of the Kat Von D Shade and Light two-tone blushes, but I noticed today that they're no longer available on the Sephora website or the Kat Von D website. So I know there was lots of negative reviews about these, so I'm guessing because of that, they were pulled from the shelves. Hopefully they're reformulating them. So I did send a little tweet to Kat Von D Beauty asking what happened to the blushes. I was just curious, who knows if they'll even respond, but I did pick one up. I'm just gonna share it with you and just tell you a little bit about it. So this is Piaf and Poe, and I believe Piaf is one of her cat's names. She has like Mexican careless, careless. Why do I wanna say Mexican careless? Mexican hairless cats, I believe. They're like hairless cats, but I think they're Mexican hairless cats. I don't know. Anyways, this is the one that I got. It's really pretty. It's like a pink and a mauve. And this does work for me. I like it. Do I think it's worth it? Do I think it can be better? Yes. I actually prefer her older blushes. I have all of her older blushes, and I think those were incredibly smooth and blendable, and I really liked the formula of those, and I was really sad to see that those were discontinued. But I do like this, I'm just like, eh, it's okay, I don't think it's a must have. So hopefully if they reformulate them, they're better, because I know a lot of people complained. So the packaging's, it's okay, I like it. These are pressed really hard into the pan. I found that they applied better with a synthetic brush that was dense. I used a natural haired brush, and when I used that, it was just very patchy in application. I wasn't happy with it. But then I started using a synthetic dense brush, and it just applied so much better. These are very sheer and you can build them up, but they're super incredibly sheer um, initially when you first apply it. I definitely had to go in a couple times to really get some color. I'm not wearing this today. I was wearing it yesterday, I think. So I like it, but I think it could have been better for sure. So anyways, that's the shade, the light, and then mix together. So because these are so sheer, they definitely weren't suited for people with like a darker complexion. I just have a couple more items and we're done. So I picked this up a while back when it first came out. It's the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in Pearl. And I just keep debating. I go back and forth about this because I just don't know if I want to keep it for the price. Um, it's really soft. It's really pigmented. The problem I have with it, it's just so stark white, and even though I have a light complexion, I just feel like it's almost too stark white. Like, it looks ashy on my cheeks when I apply it as a highlighter. I mean, it would make a beautiful eyeshadow, but do I need this much eyeshadow? And for the price, I'd rather get like a small frosty white eyeshadow, you know what I mean? 
So oh, I think I'm going to take this back. I know some people said they mix it with other highlighters and I've been meaning to do that, but I don't know. I have a Sephora eyeshadow, like a sample one that is like a frosty white and it's a dupe. And then I also have ColourPop's Fanny Pack, which is a dupe as well. Obviously the formula is different, but I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit too stark white. What do you guys think? Do you have this? If you have a light complexion, do you like it? Do you not like it? I think I'm just gonna return it. I've been debating about it so much, but the more that I play with it, the more I'm like convinced that I, I don't wanna keep it because I, I like so many other highlighters so much more than that. And for the price, I just can't justify it. But lastly, I picked up the Urban Decay Vice 4 palette. This was on sale for $39. It's usually $60. And I also had a 20% off coupon. So I think I got it for like $31, which is a great deal. So I love the packaging. I think it's supposed to look like an oil slick, but I think it looks more like a spider web. Hmm. So these are all these shades in there and they're just all so pretty. I haven't even swatched. Oh, one of them fell out. Er, this one fell out. Urban Decay, that is not okay. I have to glue it back in. But I was debating for the longest time about this one as well, if I should keep it, if I should return it. Oh, I still can't make a decision. Why? There's so many colors in here that are pretty though. Hmm. Do you guys have this palette? What do you think? Should I keep it? Should I return it? It was a good steal though. For $31, I think I should keep it. You know what I mean? I think I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm gonna keep it. I almost feel like returning that Kat Von D blush as well. Just because it was pulled from the shelves and if they reformulate them and make them better, I'd rather get my money back now and then buy a new one, you know what I mean? Or just put that money towards something else. Hmm. I might have to return it. I'm gonna have to debate about that for a little bit, but that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.